Okay, uh, that was a great meal. I want to say, uh, first of all, thanks to Webs for taking care of us tonight. They always do a really good job with this. So before we go and, and, and go on with recognizing uh, our new Hall of Famers, uh, I would first like to recognize some special guests we have with us. Uh, first of all, Board of Education members that are present, uh, including Vice President Dana Naniga, uh, and board members uh, John Weesey and Cammie McDonald. <laughs> Also, uh, Garden City High School, or Garden City School Superintendent Dr. Steve Carlin. Uh, I am uh, personally thrilled every time I get a chance to see her, but uh, I'm very glad to have uh, in attendance tonight a longtime education leader in our community, Ms. Florence Wilson. Now, you may not know, but since we moved to this new high school and Florence Wilson is so nearby, we do a lot of things with them. They come to our pep rallies, and when they come to our pep rallies, they get a whole lot louder. <laughs> uh, and it's great, and our student councils work together. And we've started a tradition a few years ago that at graduation practice, all the Florence Wilson kids come over and they write notes to our seniors, mm -hmm. and they deliver them. And some of them are, are great, you know, don't mess up or <laughs> whatever, I mean, they're, they're, but usually we do that at practice, graduation practice, and we did that today. The last thing we did at graduation practice was have the Florence Wilson students come over, and the way we do it is all of our seniors would be sitting out at these tables, and they can't get up until a Florence Wilson student comes over and gives them a congratulations note. And usually we, we had to make it so, oops, we had to make it so the high school students would stay seated because they would go and run for one of these notes. You, usually you have the 18 year olds and they've been there, done that, they can't wait to get out of here. But you put a first grader with a note and a pencil in front of them, and they can't wait. They're waving their hands. Come, come, I don't have one yet. I don't have one yet. And so we have so much fun with the Florence Wilson Eagles. And so it's, it's great to have Florence Wilson here. My daughters were both Florence Wilson Eagles, and so we're very proud of that partnership. And uh, it, it's neat to see our Buffaloes and the Eagles all coming together and, and doing these things and forming that relationship. And uh, so we're, I'm also really happy tonight because over the past several years, Roy and I were talking, there are probably more former Hall of, or current Hall of Fame members that have come back for this than in previous, in previous years. Uh, you see, in, in 1984, the idea was conceived whereby past graduates of Garden City High School might be honored for their accomplishments. And this idea was brought into action in 85 when the first members of the Hall of Fame were inducted. In doing this, we show that our buffaloes are second to none. And over on the wall, we've got our pictures of the 72 current members of our Hall of Fame. We can't wait to put two new pictures up. We can be proud tonight to have them represent us and very proud to have our two new members be our keynotes at graduation tomorrow morning. But I do want to recognize today the current Hall of Fame members that are in attendance. So. Hall of Fame members in attendance, please rise. We're, we're lucky to have Janet Reed, Florence Wilson, Dan Fankhauser, Alan Shelton's here, Don Heineman, John Wheeler, Beth Tedrow, uh, Mike Collins, Dennis Mesa, Stuart Nelson, and uh, Alan Stefline. Very happy to have you guys here. Tonight. And this is the first time in two years we've been able to do in-person inductions due to COVID-19. So uh, I do want to get a chance to mention those four members out of those two classes. Uh, in 2020, Robert Lewis and Dan Fankhauser were inducted. And in 2021, 
uh, Dr. Jim Fishback and Steve Quickenbush were inducted into the Hall of Fame and they didn't get that opportunity and we're glad to have Dan here tonight. Uh, so this year, we'll get on to the business of two more distinguished graduates of Garden City High School and adding them tonight, we're honored to have Lee Reeve of the class of 1967 and Leo Prieto of the class of 1995 and add them to the list of Garden City High School Hall of Famers. At this time, I'd like to have Hall of Fame member Janet Reed come up and induct or introduce Mr. Reed. Thank you. Good evening. As Steve said, I'm Janet Reed. I'm a 1975 graduate of Garden City High School as is my husband, and a member of the Hall of Fame. Tonight I have the honor to introduce our local inductee for the class of 2022 into the Hall of Fame, Lee Reeve. Lee Reeve is a second generation cattleman. He is a leader, an innovator. Wait, instead of reading his biography to you, I looked at, thank you, Alice, the 1967 TCHS year <laughs> to find out what I could learn about Lee as a student at Garden City High School. I, <laughs> I learned that Lee was a wrestler. Kelly just said earlier this evening, I didn't know he wrestled in high school. He was a tennis player one year, was in key club and in Spanish club. He was pictured on five pages that year, his senior year. Well, that didn't tell me very much. So I asked some of his classmates and people in the classes around him to tell me a little bit about Lee, more than what his biography and the yearbook show. I got the same answer every time. Cindy McGraw, you remember Cindy? Good friend of mine who now lives in Western Colorado. After I had found out Lee was going to be our inductee, I sent a text to Cindy, tell me about Lee. She said the same thing as everybody else. He is such a nice guy. He's very humble and he's always been a quiet leader. And I probably talked to five or six other, other people and that's what they all said. So, I'm going to let Lee tell you about Lee Reed. My guess is that he will tell you this is a great honor to him and that his family, especially Brenda, Kelly, Justin, and Darcy, and his friends are his greatest accomplishments. So, without further ado, as they say, I'd like to invite Lee Reeve to the stage to help with the unveiling of his portrait to be placed in the Hall of Fame and allow him to say a few words. something I would never, never expect. Um, you know, one of my friends said, uh, said, you know, I think, I don't think you're eligible until the statute of limitations ran out <laughs> to, to be considered. But, uh, first of all, I want to introduce Brenda, Kelly, Darcy, and Justin, my family. I, I forgot to do that one time, so I'm, that's what's on my page here. So, <laughs> so uh, we, uh, uh, you know, when you look back at our high school years, I think the 
best way to say it is we had better teachers than we were students. You know, and, uh, and, you know, we, you know, high school, like always, when you look back, was just a blur, you know, but when you look back at, at our life, you know, it was, it was, it was a pretty important, a pretty important time. When we, uh, when I graduated from, from high school, of course, we had, we had basically two choices because this was in the 60s and if you didn't, if you didn't go to college, then you were probably going to go to the Army because that was during the, the Vietnam War. So after college, we all thought that, because we all did, uh, we all were going to get, we were all going to get drafted and you're going to, and you're just going to go to the Army. That's just the way it was. But in my senior year, they came out with the uh, draft lottery and all of a sudden I didn't, uh, you know, I had a high enough number that I wasn't going to get drafted, but I had no plans. And uh, so my dad mentioned, you know, because my dad was one of these guys that was always shorthanded and always had lots of projects. So he said, well, why don't you just come back and help me for, for a little while till you figure out what you're going to do. You know, that was about 50 years ago, and I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do. So, but, um, you know, when we, when we, it was, when we got out, when, when we came back, you know, this, this was a real, real growth time for this, this area. You know, the cattle feeding industry was, was moving from the Corn Belt out to Western Kansas. The uh, huge development irrigation and luckily, we kind of were kind of in the middle of that, and so that was a real, you know, kind of a fun, rewarding, you know, time where we got to meet, you know, a lot of people and do and do a lot of things, you know, <clears throat> and uh, and and through all that time, you know, it's just it's just it's just a world, you know, it's just a whirlwind because it goes it seems to go so fast, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden. Here you are, 50 years later, and you're and you're, you're looking back and think, where where did it all where did it all go? But one thing I kind of wanted to mention uh, as I as I was thinking about this and trying to put these remarks together, you know, I had uh, you know, there's four of us four of us kids grew up together uh, ever since some of us since the second grade, and and. You know, when you look back at all of our lives, that one of them, you know, one of them went, went to work for a Prudential Life Insurance Company. He was an agent, had an agency, and Prudential at one time had, had uh, 25,000 agents, and he was in the top 25. One of my other friends, Vic, uh, went to K-State, got a degree in, in uh, mechanical engineering, Ended up at the, you know, and working for Slumberjay, which is a big oil service company, and was and moved to Houston. Was very very high in that company when he retired. The third the third friend uh, went to work for Motorola, but then eventually ended up with uh, Mitsubishi. And he was the national sales uh, director for that for Mitsubishi Electric in the United States. And I think the whole the whole crux of that is, is, is you know, look, look how many people this area has put out. You know, I don't know if it's in the water, it's in the educational system, mm -hmm. is, it, is it the culture or what? But look how many, you know, everywhere I go, wherever you, you look back, and I've been to a lot of places, and everybody knows where, where Garden City is. It's just, it's just one, of those, one of those places. You know, next week, Leadership Kansas is going to come out to, to, to Garden City after for about the, for, for over 40 years they've been coming. Leadership Kansas is a uh, it's a group of, uh, of of business and and young leaders that travel around the state for a year and, and just look at just look at what's going on in Kansas. But what's really interesting about about Garden City is is in all the places they go, they uh, you know Garden City is always on on, their, on the top of their of their most inspirational places that they go. So that really says something for this community. So I think 
what I want to leave everybody with here is that we really have something here. And we've, uh, and I don't know if it's just the different cultures that are all kind of melted together, like the, like the, like the trial they did with uh, or the research project they did with the Ford Foundation, trying to find out why these, these minorities adapted so well in the Garden City or, or what, what it is. But we, we have something here and I think we want to make sure we cherish cherish that. You know, when you look back at what we all want to do is we want to we want to keep we want to teach these kids how to think. You know, we don't need to teach them what to think. We just need to teach them how to think. And we've done a great job to this point. So, thank you very much. call forward one of the true heartbeats of Garden City High School, Miss Alice Urtiaga, and she will introduce Mr. Prieto. and I am here tonight to introduce Leo Prieto, 1995 graduate from Garden City High School. I nominated Leo because I felt that he would be an outstanding inductee into the Garden City High School Hall of Fame and a positive role model for all of our students here at Garden City High School. For more than 20 years, Leo has worked as a community organizer, motivational speaker, lawyer, MC, and marketing consultant in the nonprofit, corporate, management, and political fields, respectively. He served as a public policy fellow with the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute in Washington, D.C., where he worked at the U.S. Department of Justice Civil Rights Division, followed by Capitol Hill, helping shape national immigration, education, and health policy. Leo has worked in Kansas City as the Regional Director for the U.S. Hispanic Leadership Institute, followed by KU Law, then Sporting KC as Director of Corporate Partnerships and Latino Relations. He has worked for the U.S. Department of Commerce and Truman Medical Centers as Community Engagement Director. Leo continues to stay heavily involved in creative marketing, PR strategies, and successful business development projects while devoting his time to several nonprofit boards in the Kansas City community, including the Prime Health Foundation Board, Guadalupe Centers, Street Medicine KC, and Big Brothers Big Sisters Diversity Task Force. He was a most wanted honoree for Big Brothers Big Sisters. He also serves as a big mentor himself and was named the 2019 Big Brother of the Year for his service. He has also been honored, <clears throat> excuse me, he has also been honored as Ingram's 40 Under 40 and as a Kansas State University Distinguished Alumni. He is one of the youngest recipients of the Oakley Award. <clears throat> He is one of the youngest recipients of the Oatley Award, which is the highest recognition given by the Mexican government to an individual outside of Mexico for his work in the Latino community. He has served as the official advisor to the Mexican consulate in the areas of economic development, health and wellness, immigration, trade, commerce, labor rights, the arts and culture. Most recently, Leo has spent some time at Arrowhead Stadium on the sidelines and in the broadcast booth as the voice for the Kansas City Chiefs Spanish broadcast while serving as the Vice President of Market Development for three other NFL teams. 
His newest venture and current capacity is serving as Associate Vice President of Development and Equity for the YMCA of Greater Kansas City, where his focus is on diversity, inclusion, and global strategies that strengthen organizational capacity to deliver the wise cause of youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. He manages comprehensive programs for identifying, cultivating, and soliciting major gifts that support and further the mission, programs and outreach efforts that lead to significant community impact. It is my great honor and pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Leo Prieto. She's going to be retiring this year, and I couldn't think of anyone else uh, to introduce me than than Allison for the nomination. And the funny thing is, we, we were able to have lunch yesterday and catch up. And before we even got to the restaurant, we're in the car, and she's like, "I have something to tell you." I was like, "What's that?" She's like, "You inspired me." I was like, "Huh?" She's like, "Yes, yes." I was in you know, in the, in the counselor's office from the front desk, and I didn't know there was a position that came up, and you told me, Alice, get out of your comfort zone. Get it, you can do it. And, you know, some years later, now look where she's at. You know, she's at the highest level over here at the AD's office, and um, just thank you for your service, because you are a monarch of, of Garden City, like a madrina here, for many, many kids that came through, and I remember my senior year, Back before everyone, you know, I guess everyone has iPads now, right, here in the school. Well, we didn't have iPads in 95. Um, I was plopped down in, next to Alice's desk in the counselor's office uh, doing scholarship applications. Uh, during my one hour, I had free. And, um, and again, that was inspirational in itself. Um, I was, wasn't a citizen yet. Um, and then, you know, the principal at the time and everyone got together and did a little fund. Uh, back then, the, the, to get your citizenship, it was only 120 bucks. Now it's a lot more, <laughs> as we all know. But um, because nobody knew I was, wasn't a citizen. Um, and because we immigrated when I was three years old. So I'm probably gonna save some of this speech for tomorrow. But I uh, started from the border now I'm here, okay? Empezamos de la frontera y yo estoy aquí. Pero es la cosa que mi último año aquí no era ciudadano. Y me ayudaron, me apoyaron a todos de la secundaria para agarrar mi ciudadanía y para, para lograr eso. Uh, so yeah, so that was a huge, I mean, GC has always been so supportive. Um, and I've, you know, I've received a few awards. I think Alice mentioned some of those. And very, very grateful because you never do something or go into it to get an award. Um, and uh, this one's even more special because it's, it brings it back to where it all started. And, uh, and as I say this, I'm gonna get to my parents here soon, um, but um, I know that Dennis Mason's sitting here and he was one of the first ones that uh, kind of took me under his wing. He was mayor at the time. I think I may have asked him for a letter of rec. I think he you know, introduced me to golf for the first time. Uh, but then even when I was at K-State, you know, he, um, he supported you know, my efforts there and, and he was the first one. Um, you know, to give me a, a jacket, a sport coat. And um, I think it was a belt too. I was like, dang, Dennis, I don't wanna take all your clothes. <laughs> uh, but, but I mean, that's, talk about giving your shirt off your back. I mean, he was giving me his coat, you know, 
he's like, Leo, this is, you know, this is the trajectory. This is what you're going to be doing. Um, and now I'm, you know, I'm proud to say I look over here across and I see David, one of my good friends that made it from Kansas City. And he started his own suit company, also from Garden City. Started his own suit company and it's, it's his business. And then it's a nonprofit side where it's uh but the theory's there, I like it, but let's just see how we do finesse. And so a few years later, you got, you got David doing this thing here, and this is he's responsible for this suit right here. So if you like it, check out his selection garment company. You know, good stuff. Um, but um, but thank you all for, for that mentorship, and it had to stop. That was when I was in high school. But I want to get, you know, before that. And uh, when I asked Roy how much time I had, he gave me a wrong answer because he said, well, he doesn't know me that well. So he's like, you can go out over. I'm like, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep it short, but um, I have a lot to say and a lot of thank yous. Uh, but before I continue, again, I want to just congratulate Alice, uh, Principal Nordy. Thank you for the tour. I was so blown away by how different and how many resources are here now. Um, Roy, thank you for all your help in putting this together and making it feel at home. Uh, Superintendent Carlin. So there's two people in this room that actually know that win this, that I had a fierce three-point shot. Well, Jeremy did too, but before that, it was Coach Carlin over there that's now the superintendent, and uh, where's Mr. Thompson? There he is, there he is. I was back in like seventh grade, the one they didn't want to let me shoot three-pointers until I started making them. But, um, so those were the good old days. I wanted to thank you all for being here, the school board for being here, to show how important it is to support the community and utilizing the space to do that, I know that in my bio, you mentioned a little bit about the Mexican consulate, but when I was telling my family about where to go, they're like, oh, we're good, we know where to park. Because they've been here for the Mexican consulate and you know, on their mobile visits here and help people get their documentation and so forth. So thank you, Garden City High School, for opening this up and for making it what it is. And thank you for molding me, because you all, it literally started here. Besides the border, it started in Garden City and GC. Uh, you all molded me into the leader that I am today. And so I wanted to thank you for that. And uh, again, this honor is, is, is just unexpected and, and, and very grateful for it. And I'm also grateful for being the president of Ms. Florence Wilson. That's awesome. Like, talk about icons. It's, it's a blessing to be in your presence and, and thank you for all that you've done. And actually, I know where Florence Wilson is now because on my way here, when I picked up Alice for lunch, I first I went to the wrong high school because I was like, oh, wrong flagpole. And then I come back this way, and then I run to the school. I'm like, that's kind of small for a high school. And it was Florence Wilson. And then I just kept on driving. So I found it, and I know where it is. I should have GPSed it, but you know, Garden City, I don't think you really need to, but you do sometimes. So um, my parents, pero primero mi familia, todos parense de, por favor. My family, if you could stand up. Everyone. Familia, andale, pasenle. Mis tíos, mis tías, mis primos. Sister Liz, Susana, everyone, we steal. Um, gracias. Thank you for being here. Um, again, it's, it, that's why I'm here, because of you all. And um, you know, there's one person that's not here, and that's my brother Richie. And as, as a lot of you know, we lost Richie about four years ago. And, um, and you talk about, when people, when, you know, when I heard about this, people heard about this award, like, Leo, you're so inspirational. You inspire the community, you inspire the people. You know what, it's, it's my brother that was the one that was inspired, you know? Uh, family man, dad, you know, father, brother, the best ever. And uh, so I'm, I'm very, I know he's here with us. Uh, he actually took my seat right there. Uh, he's here with us today and, you know, and I'm proud to say, I talked to Roy a little bit about this, is that uh, we want to start a memorial and scholarship in his name. And uh, I want to bring back the golf tournament too. So we'll probably start doing that. So I'll have to probably summon my cousin, mi primo Carlos, to get that going because I heard he's a pretty decent golfer. Uh, but I just wanted to share that with everyone um, and get that going and, and continue to support and inspire uh, up and coming, you know, kids coming out of, I can say kids now because I'm like a grown adult. Uh, students uh, coming out of Garden City and, and to, 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 to continue the, you know, the, the, the character and the, the motivation and, and what our parents taught us and what got us here, you know. And speaking of my parents, Okay, real quick, 
Give him a round of applause, please. Okay, that's good. I want to do that because, again, I mean, they're literally responsible for me being here. You know, but, but what I really want to say is, I mean, you know, immigrated here when I was three years old. You know, my dad sent for us. Uh, back in the day, again, it was a lot less expensive. Uh, but we lived here under the radar for about eight years before, you know, amnesty back in the day. And, uh, you know, became residents. Still, you know, a little under the radar because you never know what's going to happen. But, you know, my dad just, re just retired last year or 40 plus, year 40 plus years, the same company. And so now, you know, they get to spend more time with the family, get to visit my sister and everyone and us in Kansas City. My other little brother's in Oklahoma City, could make it there at Disney World, you know. But, um, and we get to go to Mexico, maybe plan a couple more trips. But it was literally my parents here, the hard work that my dad instilled in me, still does, because I thought he was retired and he came up to visit me for my birthday and I thought we were gonna take a couple days off and go check out a game or something, but instead we reinforced the fence. You know, so which was good. You know, Home Depot visit, lumber still expensive, but we did it. It was fun. It was good. And then my mom, again, my mom, the caring, the you know, the support, what they provided for me was priceless. Like, you know, they maybe they couldn't help me out with my homework, and I still managed to get straight A's. You know, or my basketball move or whatever, and they couldn't be there at all my games. But I knew they were always there in spirit, and I knew they did the sacrifices that they made so that we could all go to school, all go our separate paths, you know? I know my sister and my brother got tired of being called Little Leo, you know, so they did their own thing, which was beautiful, because just go to show what you can do. And um, I'll never forget my first sales job, I think I was five years old. My first client was Jeremy's mom. Over there, Marcy, you wanna raise your hand real quick? So this is back, again, before there was panaderias everywhere, here in Garden City, or tortillerias. My mom would make these Mexican bread, right? And then we would sell them. And so I'd go around the neighborhood there on A Street, and Jeremy was my first client, because Jeremy could eat anything. Especially those Mexican bread, like the strawberries, chocolates, vanilla. So we were alley neighbors, and he was my first client there. Marcy, thank you for being such a great client always. The tamales too, we kept them coming. Uh, but seriously, like growing up like that, uh, in the community and, and uh, you know, we, we made a little cash, not a whole lot, but it was fun. It was my first entrepreneurship. Uh, but, but that was fun, and, and again, for Jeremy and his mom to be here today, you know, Jeremy drove in from Tulsa, for all of you that either drove in or made it a point to be here, I know that some people couldn't make it. I, I really appreciate that. Um, teachers, again, I could go on forever. There's a couple that aren't here that couldn't make it. Um, most of you know Mr. Burnell, uh, Mr. B. Uh, he's been retired for a little while now, but he's in Costa Rica, believe it or not. Uh, but he was the first one that sent me abroad, basically. Because before Costa Rica, all I knew was Mexico. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? And then one summer, I was running by his house, literally running by his house. Superintendent Carlin, because I did, used to run a lot. Um, and he's like, you want to go to Costa Rica? I'm like, well, yeah, but um, that's like far away. <laughs> you know, I just can't get up and go. He's like, if you want to go, we'll make it happen. Go ask your parents. And next thing you know, two weeks later, I submitted for like a little, little expedited VIP passport. And I was in Costa Rica like a month later. And that started my journey of like traveling abroad. Ever since then, like even at K-State, I studied abroad in South America. I was in Paraguay, Brazil, and Argentina. In law school, I was even in Ireland, went to Dublin and uh, Amsterdam and all that good stuff in Europe. Uh, but that just kind of got the buck. And now I still travel whenever I can. But, I mean, he was one of those teachers that was beyond a teacher. And that's what GC's known for, is beyond teaching. Um, another one was uh, Mr. Schrader. Again, he's not here, but he was a counselor back at, at A. Huber back in the day. And uh, he was one of my first coaches. And he took me under his wing. He was one that said I couldn't shoot threes until I started making them. Um, but, you know, from a small town and near, near Manhattan, and, and he adopted Garden City, he could learn Spanish. I mean, it was a beautiful thing. Um, and then, you know, last but not least, right there, your, your uh, Crystal Award, you know, one of your Crystal Award recipients, Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson was beyond an honors English teacher, you know. Not only did he help me with English, I mean, it was honors, but uh, he, was, he was hard on me and he was, he was good though. He saw, he saw something in me. Like a lot of these teachers, a lot of these coaches, a lot of these mentors, they saw something in me. 
And yes, it, you know, you have to be inspired and you have to do it yourself and, and take some accountability, but uh, you talk about it takes a village. You all are that village, okay? You are the village that's responsible for me, you know, going to DC for, you know, going abroad for, you know, doing what I do, you know, so I really appreciate that. And a couple other coaches I wanted to mention that, that aren't here, Coach Hasso, remember him? I remember I even used to be able to do a little impersonation, you know, back in the day when he was a basketball coach. Anyone remember Mr. Hasso? Yeah. yeah. Defense is desirable. However, you must execute offensively. I mean, he was good. Um, he, was, he was awesome. And uh, Coach Ford, again, Coach Ford, he, I mean, I remember when I, you know, I was telling the telegram a memory about my first, one of my memories here. And, when I ran my first cross country race, after a mile, I was like, where's the finish line? They're like, you got two more miles to go. And I still hung in there and I ended up winning that race. Uh, but it was Coach Ford that took me and uh, Foot Locker, wherever we had, and got me my first Air Maxes, you know? And so, and he was also a basketball coach as well. So it's those kind of things. And Mr. Padilla, who I know couldn't be here today, again, when it came to track and running, He's like, echale ganas, echale ganas, you know, and, and that's, when it says echale ganas, it's, you know, you have some desire, and that is really what this is all about. You have to have it from within, and, and you have to have that desire. Without that desire, you don't have anything. Um, and a, a couple other mentors, I know Tim Cruz is in here, but Tim, always been very supportive. And of course, Lydia Gonzalez, I just went to go see her a couple months ago in Kansas City. She's, do, she's doing well. Um, pillars of Garden City, you all, I'm not in the Hall of Fame. We are in the Hall of Fame, okay? We all made this happen together. Um, and um, again, Jeremy, one of my best friends from back in the day, we were little kids. Funny story about Jeremy, again, I didn't know any English. Like, my kindergarten year, I went to preschool, I knew a little bit, and then in kindergarten, instead of Lobardo, I was like, your name's Leo. I'm like, okay, it's a lot easier to pronounce. But I remember Jeremy and I playing in the backyard, and I heard barefoot. And I thought, is there a bear somewhere? Like, what's going on? I didn't know it was like without your shoes on. So it's those kind of things that, I mean, kind of crazy, but it's, it's, it's those memories that you have, you know, that, that where you learn and you really get to make those lifelong friendships. And, and again, I know that, you know, everyone in this room has lost someone recently, whether it's last year during COVID or, or beyond, and uh, just make sure that, that you know that, that they're with us. You know, this little pin right here that, that David gave me, it's a dove. And the dove is, you know, a symbolic of, of the angels and the people that are, that are still with us. So just keep that in mind. Um, and that's about it. I just want to say, aquí estamos, si no nos vamos, we're here, we're here to stay. Looks like that picture is going to be here to stay for a while. So the Prieto name continues. So um, thank you again, everyone, for, for this great honor. Um, be remiss if I mentioned my lovely girlfriend Erica. Um, you know, it's been there, done that, and I appreciate all you do. Uh, my sister Liz, you know, and Aaron, you guys in KC, and I have some family there, you know, so it's, it's nice to have, and, and everyone. Uh, but if I could just leave you with a couple, just one thought real quick, and that's kind of what, how I've lived my life. Um, Obviously, I'm going to save some more of the inspirational things for tomorrow with the students, not the kids, but the students. Uh, but I am going to let you know that one thing that's gotten me through, whether I lived in D.C. or in any position that I've been in, um, I've always kept it real. And by real, I mean just genuine. Because you all taught me that. Here in Garden City, my, my Midwest morals got me through. And um, I'll never forget, you know, people will, people will forget your name or what you do or what you did, but they will never forget the way you made them feel. So whether you're talking to President Obama or you're talking to your custodial engineer, always treat people res with respect and, you know, and just, and be kind. Be kind and everything else will follow. So thanks again, it's a huge honor and thank you again for blessing me with this and uh, buenas noches. <laughs> Congratulations to both of our, our inductees. I, I really can't wait for 
the chance to hear your, your message to our students tomorrow. It's at 10 a.m. In, in the gym. We usually graduate in the evening, but we're gonna try to try a morning graduation to, to see how that works. Uh, there really isn't any time limit on the speeches and things. Beth blew the lid off of that a couple years ago, so we're just, just the way we go, so it works. Uh, please uh, stick around here when we're when we're all done and have some cake, some punch, uh, get a chance to catch up with with some folks we haven't seen in a while and congratulate our, our new members in the Hall of Fame. So thank you for being here.